Of course, it was a bit disappointing. Most of the times I'm shocked because the turnouts are bad. They're working with explosives there, with the trees and the light that is coming through the um, through the trees. <laughs> Pure joy. <laughs> my name is Marcus. I do landscape photography. This is my boy Cedric. Whenever possible, we go out to explore nature and experience quite some adventures. Let me take you with us. Encourage you to grab your camera and get out there. Explore nature, take amazing pictures and store unforgettable memories in your heart. But never forget, it's not only about the pictures, it's about being out there. We just arrived um, close where we want to go, but where we actually wanted to park, there's no way to park. It's a really small village with narrow roads, no way to park there, so I went away further, found something uh, where I can leave the car and then I took out my hiking app and planned a way and yeah there seems to be a way to go there um, but let's see so today we are going to photograph a gravel pit a big area industrial area full of sand and there's also a little lake inside and I'm hoping to get some shots that are unearthly like from Mars or something like that. All right, anyway, so let's get Cedric out of the box. And I need something to eat because I skipped breakfast and then we start the hike. It should be 40 minutes or so. I have this brilliant new hiking app that is planning my tracks for me from the car, which is down there, to that gravel pit we want to take a picture of today, which I show you here real quick. And now actually I just have to follow that. At least I hope so. So let's see what's going to happen. So this must be the way indicated by the hiking app. So we'll just hike up there and in 40 minutes we should be there. I'm not sure if we we good shots of that gravel pit or not. I just saw it on Google Earth. But anyway, even if you don't get a shot, it's worth the hike. Good time. It's a beautiful forest here. I didn't know that. Well, it's quite off from where I live, so over a one hour drive on the motorway. And it's just worth it. Just being out there with my boy who obviously has found something. <laughs> All right, I need to check the app again. There's a crossroads. So many different ways to the forest. Small and wide, clear and unclear gravel roads and dirt tracks. Without the app, uh, I wouldn't have a chance to find my way. And actually, we don't want to enter this gravel pit through the main entrance. I don't even know if that's possible. We want to come from the rear side, which is up, up the mountain. And from there, photograph down there. But, we first have to get there and I think it's still a few more meters up but the app tells me I'm on the right way even though this is here uh, well you can see it it's not really a road a bit like it oh look what this guy is doing look at that <laughs> pure joy <laughs> all right we hiked more than 40 minutes now Made it quite a bit up. I don't know how many meters. But now we are slowly arriving. You see, at the end of this road, it's getting lighter. So forest is going to end there. And then I expect there to be an open plain that is leading us to the edge of that gravel pit. So now we're gradually getting out of the forest. I think on the iPhone you cannot see it. It's totally whitened out but I see a little plane with some tree stumps a bright sky I wish the sky wasn't so bright I was hoping for big clouds but it's just gray bluish 
not so nice, not so much structure in the clouds. Uh, anyway, let's see what we can work out. All right, so this is the outside, made it out of the forest, and over there should be the edge of that gravel pit. All right, we're there, but two things changed. Number one, it's not a gravel pit, it's a stone quarry or a stone pit. And as I was afraid of, there's a fence and we're not allowed to enter. So let's see what we can do. So we, we, maybe we can take some pictures over the fence, stand on some tree stump or something and maybe anyway get some nice landscape views that may be possible. And if not, we just walk around here. There's so many, so much beautiful nature around here. We get some good shots today. If you're hiking a lot, like me, with the camera gear, tripods, drinks and whatever, dog equipment, you need a good backpack. I'm really, really happy with that B3 backpack that I got on eBay quite cheap. As you can see now, I just mounted my heavy winter jacket there because when we arrived in the morning it was very cold now it's quite warm and i just put it there don't have to care about it anymore and i still have all the camera gear inside i have two tripods mounted to that and i i really need to to make a review a tag review of this bag someday now i found something that could be worth it so i'm thinking of taking that little forest in the background, in front of the sky, and then using this road there as a leading line towards the forest. So let's see how that will turn out. I set up a shot already, so let me show you real quick. So I'm using my zoom lens to get in closer, otherwise a lot of those trees and bushes would be in the way. I don't know if you can read that. So I ISO 100 of course, I'm using aperture 8 and 1 over 200 seconds shutter speed because it's quite bright and at the moment I'm composing to just have a little sky but I might change, change this because the clouds have now a nice structure so maybe I will aim higher later and then also get more sky than this yellowish mountain in front. All right, everything set. I'm using now two second timer and I have a delay of one second. So mirror is flipping up first before taking the shot. So now let's take the shot. Okay, histogram looks good. Nicely exposed to the right. Should be all good. The next shot will be of that little lake down there, which I really like to go, especially with, with Cedric. It has, a, has such a nice color. So I'll try to get a shot of the lake, get hopefully some structure of the rocks behind it. And first shot will be more or less wide angle, so I have the zoom lens on, 70 mil. And I have a lot of this grass here in the foreground. So I might focus stack like that, focus on the back first, and then take another shot focused on the grass and then stack it with total sharpness from front to back. Let's see how that would look like. So I brought back my 16 to 35 wide angle lens. I want to take some sh sh wider shots of that background, also with the nice clouds in the sky. And had to move the tripod very close to the fence, otherwise I have some parts of the fence inside. I really hope I can catch this sky and the, the wideness of it all. 
So try a few shots and then see how it will turn out. All right, that's it for this uh, shooting spot. So I shot from here. Uh, I might go back from where I came from. Let's see if I get a better shot. I don't think that I will get anything better if I go down here because it gets down and I have one to shoot from, from top to down. And anyway, this guy, this guy, <laughs> he looks a bit bored. So I'll pack my gear up. We'll walk over there, see if we get some other shots. And then we go back home. As you can see, I'm wearing a hat and my jacket again because it got really cold meanwhile. We stopped again, try to set up another shot in the background and then through those trees and bushes as a frame. So let's see how that looks like. So I think I will go down, go back to aperture 11. ISO 100, that's always where I get best results in terms of sharpness. And, but I have to see again, because the leaves are moving, I might go up with the ISO again and also use faster shutter, uh, faster shutter speeds. In the end, I decided to go up to ISO 500 that allows me a shutter speed of one over 250 seconds with an aperture of F11. That's just better if you look how the wind is moving the leaves in order to get them sharp, I need higher shutter speeds, otherwise I have too much motion blur in the shot. So hopefully that's turning out good. So it looks great from here with the, with the lake and so on, but on the little screen you almost cannot see the lake. So this is one of the shots where I have to wait until I'm back home and then see what I can bring back. So that's it for today, at least for this side. Maybe we find something on our way back, but I don't think so. It's a, it's a beautiful forest, but I didn't see anything that I would like to take a picture of. No, no solitary old tree or something. So anyway, so we just hike back now, about 40 minutes, 45 minutes back to the car. Now I found something in the forest that I want to take. So behind me that road that is leading up there with the trees and the light that is coming through the um, through the trees. <laughs> the light that is coming through the trees. So this I'm going to take. I have set up the shot. ISO 100, aperture 8 and I'm at a focal length of 20. 20. I'm focusing to the big tree in the back uh, that is around 20 meters from here, so that means I have a near field of two point something meters. And if you can see that, I put Cedric's orange leash there, about two meters. It's not in the shot, so I'm good. My foreground should be sharp. So let's take the shot and see how it's gonna turn out. Two second shot. Found another location in the forest, and that is that broken, light white, light brown tree. That looks very interesting. So I'm setting up the shot. You can see it from here. I'm going very low, and then through the row of trees towards where I've set my focal point. I'm. Um, at a focal length of 24 millimeter now, and with the aperture of 11, I have a near field of two meters something. So I measured that, what is in front, and that little bush there. 
it's far away, so it's still in. It should be it should be sharp. Everything before that is not in my frame because it would be out of focus. All right. Oh, who's coming there? Somebody's coming. Who's that? Who's that? All right. So next thing I gotta do is wait a second. Maybe you can see that is to set up the timer. Two second timer and then let's take the shot shot we're hiking through the forest this is really the best part of doing photography outdoors. It's also one of the main reasons why I do it. So if I would do indoor photography in a studio with models, lighting, that's also good. Or street photography, also good. But I also have this guy. And somehow I have to combine this. And it's just the coolest thing in the world to walk through the forest and explore nature with my dog. And he loves it. He just loves it. So many things for him to explore, to see. And that's why we do it. And then I get back home after many hours and I get in front of my computer, download the pictures I've taken on that day. And then most of the times I'm shocked because the turn are so bad, <laughs> but there are also some keepers always. That made me proud that I can upload to Instagram and show to my friends. And that remind me of a good time that I had with my dog. So we're back at the road. There's the car. We've been hiking now four hours that hiking and taking pictures that is. So we spent a lot of time just taking pictures. And it was great again. Really enjoyed it. Walking through the forest, finding good spots. Of course, it was a bit disappointing that we couldn't get into this stone coral but i mean that's clear that's dangerous they were they're working with explosives there and yeah it's a big risk that you fall down the steep stone walls and anyway so i hope the pictures that i took from the other side of the fence turned out good see that later and yeah then that's it for today we get into the car now drive back to munich one hour, 20 minutes, something like that. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back soon. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you soon. Bye bye.